night, good night. Good night to Britain's New Road. Good night to Gunsight. Good night to everybody in the sound of my voice. Good night, St. Michael South. I feel so good to say that. I can say it again. Good night, St. Michael South. Now, for those of you who do not know, I will tell you, I am the Barbados Labour Party candidate for St. Michael South Central, but St. Michael South is family. We are holding down one Britain's Hill. Britain's Hill is warm, and we have some important work to do. It is a wonderful feeling to be inspired by and to admire young women who are younger than you. I want to say something tonight about Roshanna Trim. Because I stood there, and the goosebumps not gone yet, Roshanna. I want you to keep on doing this important work. Your voice is important. Your voice is why Kirk and I and Ryan and all of the young candidates of the Barbados Labour Party are here. It is you and the people of Barbados that we are fighting for and we are thrilled to have you alongside us. Well done, well done. Now, I, I am going to, we had some amazing speakers up here tonight and they talked about everything from the economic issues, to the drainage issues, to, to the larger political issues, there ain't nothing much left for me to say. <laughs> but I, I, I was out this morning in Britain's Hill, and I want to talk tonight about St. Michael South Central. I want to talk tonight about the people that over the last year and a half, I have come to feel deeply connected to, because that is what this work is about. I grew up in Haggett Hall, in Sinclair Road, Haggett Hall. I went to Belmont Primary School. St. Michael is my home. And the reason that I wanted to come to do political service, and I said, do, this is, this is about action. This is not about warming a seat or loitering in Parliament. This is about work on behalf of the people of, Bar of Barbados. And I have come to feel deeply connected and deeply invested in what happens to the young people of St. Michael South Central. And not just to the young people, because they live somewhere. They live in homes with mothers and fathers and grandparents who in a lot of cases are taking care of them. In the work that Kirk and I and, and Ryan and some others do, we talk a lot about dependency. What is a household having a certain level of dependency or low or high dependency, all that means is, all that means is that you have a certain number of people in a household and a certain level of income. And what we're seeing more and more in the last 10 years, and this is what I'm seeing all across at Michael South Central, is you have some households that have no income at all. You have some households with one pension that a grandmother is getting and six adults that are not working, not able to find employment. And it means that that one pension that would previously have gone just to pay for medication or to pay for a little vegetables at the market now have to support an entire household. These are the issues that we are seeing in this country. We have government agencies that Yes, have good public sector employees, but that are no longer doing the work for and on behalf of the people of Barbados. Throughout St. Michael South Central, there are people who were previously benefiting from certain types of transfers from the welfare department. And all of a sudden, they find themselves falling off of the list. All of a sudden, they're telling them, you no longer qualify, we have nothing in here for you. And there's no discussion about why or what these people are supposed to do. How is it that Barbados got to the place where people can no longer afford to eat? Where people can no longer afford to go and buy a Panadol or a Whiz or a Disprin from the pharmacy when they have a headache? We are watching this country crumble. We are watching our families fall apart. We are watching young people who have no focus, they have no aim, they feel no hope. 
And this is something that we see. This is not academic. And you know, the hurtful thing about it is that those in government now seem to think that they can come and wag their finger at us and tell us to behave better and that these problems are going away. We don't need a head teacher, we need a prime minister. And that is what the Barbados Labour Party is going to bring to you when Mia Amor Motley is elected as the first woman prime minister of Barbados. Some real leadership, some real inspiration, some real direction. The only thing that is really wrong with Barbados is the Democratic Labour Party. The only thing that is really wrong with this country is the Democratic Labour Party. Don't be fooled. Everywhere I go, I try to encourage people to hold on to the Barbados that we knew 10 years ago. It wasn't that long ago. It wasn't that long ago that we didn't have to walk through sewage and toilet paper in the streets. It wasn't that long ago that roads were not caving in and people had to be warned by emergency announcement not to travel certain roads because the road is literally caving in. And you know, ladies and gentlemen, these are situations that people were warned about before. The South Coast sewage mess, the South Coast sewage fiasco is one such example. Who was at Top Rock for the mass meeting where the political leader, backed up by documents as she tends to be, she's not, she's not just pulling this thing from the top of her head. She showed us how this system was on the brink of collapse. Not yesterday, a, a year previous, that's two years now. But you know, this country is being presided over by people who feel that it is easy to run a country like Barbados. And they felt that they're gonna just come here and draw a salary and get fat but they didn't have any work to do. And I would understand why they would think that. Because every time the Barbados Labour Party has come to government and has served, we have made it look easy. So they thought, well, listen, with them in, with them in a big brain people, well, we could do this. But they were mistaken. Because it takes not just brain and focus and leadership and intellect and courage, it takes care and commitment. You have to care about people. This is not just a job, this is a calling. And that is why I am thrilled to be in the company of people like Kurt Humphrey. Say, Michael, so y'all know who you have? Y'all know who you have here? Yes, we do. Kurt, I can tell some of your secrets now. Yes, we do. And we, we live on Facebook, so watch out. My sister, Gail, passed away four years ago, and she went to school with Kurt. I was hearing stories about this young fella from the time he was in first form. He used to sit in Gail's class. And one day, some years later, after they had all passed, I heard Gail say to me, you know, I saw Kurt the other day, and he's doing big things. He struggled a lot, like we all struggled, but he is doing big things for his people. And I was pleased to hear that. And I was even more pleased when I realized that this is the company that I would have when we come to help lead Barbados out of the mire that these people have this country in. I was on the road yesterday in Carrington Village. And the people of, of, of that area have kept coming to us and talking to us about the drainage issues. And I say these things not because I want to suggest that, that, that people are struggling or, or, or don't, know what, don't know what to do. I'm not, it is not about trying to make people look bad. Don't let this Democratic Labour Party tell you that when we point out the issues in this country that we're trying to cry down Barbadians. We are pointing out the issues in this country because we love Barbados. And we don't think that anybody should have to live like this. And worse... It does not have to be like this. In that area, there is a serious problem with the canal that runs all along Halls Road, from the bridge road all down. The water has settled. The area has not been cleared in a long time. And so what is happening? Mosquitoes are breeding. Young children are getting sick. I never thought that in my lifetime, in this country, 
I would see a situation where we are worried about some of these illnesses, these vector-borne diseases, and these things like gastro and perhaps cholera and all kinds of things that we, we worried about before I was born and before most of us were born. This current government has taken Barbados back to a place where we have to worry whether walking in the streets is going to make our children sick. I want you to think about that. I remember the announcement some time ago that Barbados had achieved developed country status. It was the first developing country in the world to have achieved developed country status. It meant that a lot of the basic things like access to education and all these kinds of things, we, we had passed that hurdle. We were looking to move forward to, to larger goals of renewable energy and, and, and tertiary education access for all, and, and we, were, we were on the way up. And then the Democratic Labour Party happened, and we find ourselves here today. You know, all throughout Britain's Hill, there are lots of young men, and in Carrington Village too, and Roshana mentioned it earlier, who want to contribute, who want to support their families. This idea that, well, the fellas on the block out there because the men, the aimless, the men want to do nothing, don't believe that foolishness. In any society, in any country, there will be people who, a minority of people, who don't want to be inspired and would rather not be inspired. But Kirk and I walk through Britain's Hill every day. And these people, these young men have become our family. Some of them, some of them have come to us to express that they want to contribute. There is so much talent in Britain's Hill. There's so much cricket talent and football talent and music. There's a young man in Valerie that producing music video after music video. The man is lyrically so tight. He should be on an international stage. There are lots of them all over Britain, so all over Carrington Village, all over Clapham and Flagstaff, throughout South Central and throughout St. Michael's South. And all they've ever wanted was an opportunity. But this government has turned their need and their want to contribute into a political football. And they think that all people want is a little something to keep them close, keep them hungry and keep them close, keep them without anything and keep them close. And that is the only way that they can think to govern these people. But Barbados is better than that. We are not staying in that gutter with Frondel Stewart and, and his lot of bandits. Barbados is better than that. Our motto is pride and industry. And that's not by accident. Barbadians are proud. They want to work on behalf of their families and on behalf of their communities. They want to do well, they want to succeed, they want to excel. And so a big part of the work that we have to do is we have to return the sense of hope an opportunity to these young people. It is going to take all of us to bring Barbados back. It is going to take all of us. We cannot think that we can try and go forward without bringing every single Barbadian along with us. One of the most saddening things of this last administration has been the removal of free tertiary education. I went to the University of the West Indies free. And it's not until I started to walk the streets of St. Michael that I realized how much this policy has deprived families of their hope and of any chance or idea that they had a future success. The number of people who had to drop out in their final year, the number of people who had to try and take loans to finish, then graduated without work and are unable to repay the loans. This idea that education has all of a sudden become a privilege for a few, it is nonsense, don't believe it. 
Because these are the same people who went to school free, whose children went to school free, and who now want to come and deprive you of the chance to be educated. But you know why they want to do it? Because they think that if they keep people poor and foolish, that they will vote for them. But we are better than that. And we are choosing different. We are choosing in St. Michael South, Kurt Humphrey. We are choosing all across Barbados, the candidate that cares for the people of Barbados. You know, it saddens me the notion that all politicians are the same. It saddens me. And I don't believe it. I've never believed it. And I ask people if they can cast your mind back to 10 years ago. I know it's hard. I know it's hard to step out of the struggle that you are in now because the struggle is all around us. But I want you to cast your mind back to where we were when the debt was less than half of where it is now. When we had young people going to school free, going to, to UE free of course. When we had young people feeling safe to walk up and down the streets. I want to say that bad governance does not just affect politics and politicians, you know. When you look at the very top and you see corruption, and you see a lack of care, you tell yourself, well, if these people don't feel that they have to show up and do the work that the people elected them to do, well, I ain't got to show up either. It starts to trickle down everywhere. It is not a coincidence that we are seeing the breakdowns that we are seeing across this society. It is not a coincidence. If you model in discipline, in discipline starts to take hold in your country. But the Barbados Labour Party is here to say to you, to hold on. Because this pain and this suffering will endure for a night. But joy is coming in the morning, ladies and gentlemen. And I don't want to, I don't want to give you the impression that it's going to happen in one day or two days or three. We have a lot of work to do. And that is the reason why we are talking to our people. That is one of the mistakes of this government. They think that they're bright, 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 and they don't need anybody. They don't listen. The, most, the best information you will get is not from consultants that you pay $20,000 a month. The best information you will get is from walking up and down in your constituency, walking into people's homes if they invite you, and seeing and hearing how people are living. That is the best information that you will get. And if you don't do that, you can't pretend to govern the people that you are pretending to govern. You can't pretend to represent the people that you are claiming to represent. You know, the campaign has started. And when I look around here, I know that the campaign has started. We are not waiting for them to get themselves together. We've been waiting for 10 years to get themselves together and they haven't gotten themselves together yet. We have a duty, we have a responsibility to the people of Barbados that we love. This is an act of care. This is an act of love. That is why we are here. That's why I am here. That's why Kerry is here. That's why Cynthia has been here for how long? And that is why Kurt Humphrey is here. Because we want to make this country better, not just for our children, for our families, but for our people. And so we are on the road. We are rolling. We're not waiting. Because our responsibility is not to any government. Our responsibility is to you, the people of this country. And we need you. Ladies and gentlemen, we cannot do this alone. We need you. We don't just need you to get Kurt elected to represent you. We need you way beyond that. We need you to hold our hands as we bring this country back. And we are going to do it. The most dangerous thing that this government has allowed to take hold is the notion that nobody can do any better I want the people who are listening in their homes tonight to reject the idea that nobody can do any better. Better can be done. It does not have to be so.
It does not have to be so. And we, over the last few weeks and months, we're not waiting until the first day of Parliament to decide or to start to scratch our heads to think about what to do. We are talking with you. We are listening to you. And we are going to continue to do that until the Barbados Labour Party is returned to government under the leadership of Mia Amor Montsley. You know, we feel the struggle now. But this is an exciting time. This is an exciting time because we have an opportunity here to transform this country beyond even where it was 10 years ago. And we have the team for such a time as this. And we are going to do it. I don't want you to lose hope. I want you to know that under this Barbados Labour Party government and with your help, we are going to be able to do it. I know that the St. Michael South team is ready. Their campaign started ever since. I know that the city of Bridgetown team is ready and their campaign started ever since. I know St. Michael Southeast, St. Michael East, Christ Church West. I know everyone is ready. In St. Michael South Central, we are ready. We are not waiting to look and see what anybody is doing because we have people to represent. And I want you, every day when you go on the road to talk about Kirk Humphrey, every day when you go on the road to talk about Mia Motley and to show people who these people really are. Because the, the, the one tool, the only tool that the Democratic Labour Party government has is propaganda. Frendel talking about he can explain Mia Motley. My man, you cannot explain Mia Motley. Barbados knows Mia Motley. So do not allow their propaganda to take hold. Go out and tell people, I know Kirk Humphrey, let me tell you what kind of man Kirk Humphrey is. I know Mia Motley, let me tell you what kind of woman Mia Motley is. Let them understand that we are raising the bar on political representation in this country. I know that when that bell is rung and when you walk into that polling station on election day, you are going to show that you love Barbados and that you are ready to make a change by putting your ex next to Kurt Humphrey's name. And I know, and, and, and we plan, it's so a Michael South team and I planned this already. They come across for, for one celebration and I come across for the other. Good night to you and God bless. So there